All right, John, seven and a half laps, 28 barriers, seven water jumps, the steeplechase with Henry Rono still having the championship record and the collegiate record from way back in 1978, 43 years ago. 12 young men cut down from 24 on Wednesday's qualifying, led by Ryan Speeton of Oklahoma State. Well, Ryan Smeaton really came on the scene two years ago in 2019 where he was the runner-up at those championships. We hadn't heard much from him up until that time, but he's only one of two returning athletes from those championships. Keegan Chamati from Eastern Kentucky, excuse me, Middle Tennessee. We got Amama Jaziri from Eastern Kentucky next to him, but he was the third place finisher in 2019. But get this, Dwight, on Wednesday night for the qualifying, eight of the 12, eight of the 12 finalists here in this race all ran personal best in the prelims. Not extremely fast times throughout the season, but then they show up here at the championships and they're running real fast. And we started to have rain that was not forecast on Wednesday. It made the steeplechase very, very dicey, especially the water jump. We saw a number of spills and slips and falls during those prelims, but the times were outstanding. Orion Smeaton is one of those athletes who just kind of hangs around the middle of the pack, waits for the kicking to start, and then gets into great position, but he's an outstanding hurdler. Still always amazed at how close these guys can get to each other and still manage to hurdle the barriers. But one of the most important parts of steeplechasing is being able to perceive your distance from that hurdle, adjust your stride pattern, and then accelerate into that hurdle position. Colton Johnson of Washington State is the early leader, the junior from Bellingham, Washington. We talked about those guys navigating some of that rough weather the other night, and steeplechasers are pretty gritty customers anyway, and the water, you know, the rain coming down usually doesn't affect them that much, but when rain gets on these barriers, especially the barrier that you're pushing off to get into the water jump, that's where things got a little precarious. And we saw some guys not managing that water jump very well at all. First time through the water jump in this race. We're watching the forecast very closely and the rain keeps getting pushed off, which is good news for the high jumpers, the steeplechasers, the hurdlers, and the discus throwers. It changes the dynamic in those events. And of course, you hate to have performances marred by, at the national championships, marred by weather. And of course, the trials, the Olympic trials starting a, a week from today, right back here in Eugene, Oregon, and the forecast is for weather in the 80s and perfectly sunny. All right, we've got the steeplechase well established. Let's uh, slide over and take a look at the men's back on the track. Steeplechase, four and a half laps remaining. And it is Colton Johnson of Washington State that continues to lead, followed closely by Bennett Pasco of Arkansas State. And they're taking a little bit more conservatively today than they did in the qualifying. There's Smeaton. A lot of moving out into the outer lane in order to get a clear path to these barriers. So very important in the steeplechase, not only a 3,000 meter race, which can be taxing enough, of course, but now you've got to navigate these 36 inch barriers and the water jump as well. And you know, Dwight, in the steeplechase, I think these guys kind of get the reputation of guys who aren't fast enough. You know, they're not conditioned enough to run the 5,000 meters. They're not fast enough in the 1,500. And so they, they kind of get shuffled into the steeplechase. But this has become a very specialized event in itself. You know, as a multi-event athlete, people say, you know, well, you do the multis because you're not good at anything. But now guys are really good at the steeplechase. They're getting identified at a younger age. It takes an interesting come. Only two jumpers, three jumpers so far over this height. Back to the steeplechase with less than three laps remaining. And that is Keegan Chamadi of Middle Tennessee who decides to take up the leading duties. And Keegan Chamadi has decided to pick up the pace just a little bit. Smeaton is now and responding. Pasco is still there. Smeaton's still there. 
but it does take some effort to push that breeze aside and lead. And you can see Johnson really dropping back from first now back into around seventh place. Well, and I was going to say that these guys aren't affected that much by the by the rain and the cold weather, but the wind. Certainly, Dwight, like you said it, in all of these are gonna be, are gonna make a big difference. There's Bastion up there. Bastion took a tumble in the qualifying, but he was able to get up and finish strong. Coming up now with two laps remaining as Chamadi and right next to him is Alec Bastion, the junior from Minnesota. Big 10 steeplechase champion. Smeaton continuing to stick around, stay out of trouble, tucked in in fourth position. Smeaton from Oklahoma State. He was on that third place winning cross country team, but he got a chance. To, he got a chance to represent Canada at the World Championships in 2019 in Doha. We got a chance to see him also at the Pan Am Games where he finished sixth. Felix Candy of Liberty was also up there for a spell, but now has dropped back to about sixth. So now these athletes getting in position to make their final push, 500 meters remaining. A lot of chopping by Chamati going up to these barriers. He's not really managing his stride pattern very well in front of these barriers. There's Bastin, he's in good shape. Garrett Marsing now coming into play. Into third, Smeaton back to fourth. Bell lap and a group of four up in the front. Ahmad Jaziri trying to reconnect with that group. Smeaton now going wide. Well, I watch, watch Smeaton when he goes over the hurdles. He looks directly down at it. Wants to keep an eye on it. Marsing had a good finish in the qualifying round. It's a water jump and a barrier between these athletes and the finish line. Chamati continuing to lead as he has for about the last two and a half laps. Bastin of Minnesota right there, but now some separation occurs. One barrier remaining. It's Chamati with Smeaton now mounting a challenge. Bastin doesn't seem to have the answer. And then Smeaton goes down at that last barrier. Chamati now looks like he has it in hand. The senior from Middle Tennessee and, and Kobe Abko, Abkoi, Kenya, wins it for the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee State. Bastin of Minnesota finishing second, and unfortunately we've seen this so many times, a guy trying to make a move, misjudges, his stride pattern catches a spike, catches a toe, and goes down hard on that barrier. Well, in 2019, he got third, and this year, clean to the finish. He was able to put a little bit of separation from himself and the rest of the pack. Going over the last water jump, he forced Smeaton to move to the outside and really try to accelerate in that 100 meters down the home straight, but Smeaton just too close to that final barrier. Here's the final water jump. Look at the good push off, outstanding jump, just barely a foot in the water, and he was able to take his second step and continue to run. Here's Smeaton, oh, just too close. Those barriers do not give an inch. Smeaton was able to get up and finish for that third position but so unforgiving but congratulations to that young man on another personal best here at these championships great recovery by ryan smeaton to get third place but there's your champion keegan shimani followed by alec baston and ryan smeaton we're back with much more from eugene oregon triple outdoor track and field championships keegan shimani Third in this championship in 2019, crossing the line first here with a co collegiate lead and more importantly, the collegiate win. He's with us now, Keegan. Um, you said the plan went off perfectly. What was the plan? Uh, I wanted uh, to change the pace at the one game, Mark. I knew everyone was a kicker, as we witnessed in the prelims, especially the hit that I was, it won, where seven guys finished within a, a difference of one second. Mm -hmm. So I knew like how I had to try something different so that can separate me from the rest. And I executed it perfectly. You get down there with the last 200 to go and you still got a couple of guys with you. What's going through your mind? Uh, I knew like uh, I had a really good uh, water jump. So I knew like if somebody doesn't pass me, 
Before the water jump, I'm going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> and could you feel Smeaton go down behind you? Yeah, I felt somebody uh, went down, but I didn't know who, who it was. I didn't want to look back right then. <laughs> didn't matter, right? The race was yours. It, 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 there was nobody anymore, so I just finished it. Keegan Shimadi is the national champ. 3,000 meter steeplechase. Congratulations. Thank you.